Hello, Dark Reader, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm your host, Katie, and with me is my co-host, Carrie. Hello. Today, we're going to be talking about adult fiction coming out September 2022. This will be a two-parter because there are so many books coming out this month. So this is part one of part two. Stay tuned for part two probably this week. But before we begin, we wanted to mention that we do have our show notes posted on our website at darksideofthelibrary.com, and we do have affiliate links if any of these books do appeal to you, so go check it out. I tend to use this website as a catalog myself when I'm going through and seeing what books I would like to read. Let us begin because we have a huge list to go through. Carrie, why don't you get us started today? My first book is is a death in Door County. It's a monster hunter mystery. And I don't usually personally prefer mysteries, even if they're really, really dark. But this one intrigues me because it's about a lake monster. And I am currently recording this from a vacation house in a town that has a lake monster. So, (laughs) A Death in Door County is by Annalise Ryan. The publisher is Berkeley. And this book will come out September 13th. It's about a Wisconsin bookstore owner and cryptozoologist who's asked to investigate a series of deaths that just might be proof of a fabled lake monster. Cool. So the bookstore owner's name is Morgan, and her store is called The Odds and Ends Bookstore in Door County, Wisconsin. And she has a hobby. When she's not tending the store, she's hunting cryptids, creatures whose existence is rumored but never proven to be real. It's a hobby that cost her parents their lives, but one she'll never give up on. Some people are slow learners. No, I'm sorry. (laughs) So when a number of bodies turn up on the shores of Lake Michigan with injuries that look like bites from a giant unknown animal, the police chief turns to Morgan for help. She's a skeptic, but she can't turn down the opportunity to find proof of an entity whose existence she can't definitively rule out. And so she and her beloved rescue dog named Newt journeyed to the death's door straight to hunt for a homicidal monster in the lake. And if they're not careful, they just might be its next victims. Ah! Ooh. That's a death in Door County, and I'm definitely going to buy a copy to leave at this lake house so that my next guest, who <laughs> happens to be Katie, can be terrified. <laughs> Woo! Is, it really, is there really a rumored lake monster there? Oh, yes, in Lake Chelan, which is the third deepest lake in the country. What? There's supposedly a giant sea dragon called Silly, but that's spelled T-S-I-L-L-Y. Silly. What? Oh, man. I'm definitely going paddleboarding on that immediately when I get there. (laughs) Well, just keep your legs up on it, but don't fall in. Just stay on top of the water. Oh, God. Yeah, the drivers are more concerning than the monster, to be perfectly honest. (laughs) (laughs) So my first book of today is called Angelica Frankenstein Makes Her Match. Oh, not even meets her match. Makes it a novel. This comes out September 6th. This is by Sally Thorne, who is the best-selling author of the book The Hating Game. For generations, every Frankenstein has found their true love and equal, unlocking lifetimes, a blissful wedded adventure. Clever, pretty, and odd, Angelica Frankenstein has run out of suitors and fears she may become the exception to this family rule. When assisting in her brother Victor's groundbreaking experiment to bring a reassembled man back to life, she realizes that having an agreeable gentleman convalescing in the guest suite might be a chance to let a man get to know the real her. For the first time, Angelica embarks upon a project that is all her own. When her handsome scientific miracle sits up on the lab table, her hopes for an instant romantic connection are thrown into disarray. Her resurrected beau, named Will for the moment, all Will, has total amnesia and is solely focused on uncovering his true identity. I really can't blame him. I'd be doing the same thing. Yeah. Trying to ignore their heart-pounding chemistry, Angelica reluctantly joins the investigation into his past, hoping it will bring them closer. 
But when a second suitor emerges to aid their quest, Angelica wonders if she was too hasty inventing a solution. Perhaps fate <laughs> is not something that can be influenced in a lab? Or is Will, or whatever his name is, her dream man, tailored for her in every way? And can he survive what, ha what was done to him in the name of science and love? This is really adorable. So filled with carriages, candlesticks, and corpses, Angelica Frankenstein makes her match is the spooky season reimagining of the well-known classic that reminds us to never judge a man by his cadaver. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> This is cute. So check this one out. This is by Sally Thorne. It is Angelica Frankenstein makes her match. My next book is called Autumn of the Grimoire. Sister Solstice series. <laughs> That's hard to say. That is. Sisters Solstice series book one. The author is J.L. Vampa. It comes out September 22 from Phantom House Press. Some witches cast spells. Others slay kings. Hmm. Hmm. A mysterious grimoire, a marriage full of dark secrets, a history sculpted by a quartet of sister witches. For three hundred years, Sister Autumn has incited wars, burnt villages, killed kings, and released plagues at the bidding of the grimoire. She's been busy. Yeah. Meanwhile, her sister Winter, Sister Spring, and Sister Summer have brought forth only peace. When an order from the Grimoire sends Agatha to the kingdom of Mervelle, she already anticipates the worst. Unless she wants to face the wrath of the goddess, Agatha must keep her head down and do as she's commanded. But when the Grimoire orders her to marry a pompous prince and play the role of a peasant accepted by vicious aristocrats, she finds herself at the center of a war between the classes and an age-old prophecy. So this is a dark fantasy book. Hmm. Sounds like a lot is going on. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure this one is for me, but it is about a lot of witches, so I'm going to give it a try when it hits the library. That's <laughs> Autumn of the Grimoire, Sister's Solstice Series, Book 1 by J.L. Vampa. My next book is called The Ballad of Black Tom. This comes out September 6th. This is by Victor Lavelle. People move to New York looking for magic, and nothing will convince them it isn't there. Charles Thomas Tester, oh no, speaking of tongue twisters, oh goodness, <laughs> hustles to put food on the table, keep the roof over his father's head from Harlem to Flushing Meadows to Red Hook. He knows what magic a suit can cast, the invisibility a gu guitar case can provide, and the curse written on his skin that attracts the eye of wealthy white folks and their cops. But when he delivers an occult tome to a reclusive sorceress in the heart of Queens, Tom opens a door to a deeper realm of magic and earns the attention of things best left sleeping. A storm that might swallow the world as building in Brooklyn. Will Black Tom live to see it break? So this is published by Tor. I am... I'm curious about this book. I think I might actually pick this one up. I, I kind of like the short summary of it because it leaves a little bit of imagination there. So this is The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Lavelle. My next book is Big Bad by Lily Anderson. I'm not a fan of the weird cover, and I'm sorry I don't know how to describe it to those of you that are listening to this podcast. <laughs> It's just very, I guess, an 80s teen thriller. But this is described as Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Suicide Squad, but it is not a YA book. It's an adult, dark, rompy, kind of cheesy novel in which the most beloved villains from Buffy must team up to stop the Slayer from ending their evil universe. Oh. Step into this alternate reality where chaos reigns supreme. The mayor's sunshade has created permanent darkness over Sunnydale, fully opening the Hellmouth once and for all. Now the newly christened Demon Dale has become a safe haven for vampires, beasts, and all type of ruffians. It's never been better to be bad. As aspiring supervillains and super nerds Jonathan and Andrew attempt to hold their own in a town full of monsters. 
while eleven hundred year old vengeance demon Anya is just looking for something to give her life purpose again. She's spending her days working at an evil juice bar. But soon word gets out that there's a new big bat on the scene, one more powerful and more destructive than anyone who's come before. She, of course, is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and she's hell-bent on rooting out all of this reality's evil by any means necessary. So, it is written by acclaimed author and Buffy superfan Lily Anderson. The book brings together Buffy's most devious and beloved villains, from the trio in the whirlwind to Anya, Glory, and Vampire Willow. This is one Apocalypse Buffy fans aren't going to want to miss. The publisher is Hyperion Avenue. The book is Big Bad, and it comes out September 27. And it definitely does not sound like a boring read. <laughs> I I actually might have to pick it up, but I'm kind of sad. It's not a comic book? It is a written book. Wow. Okay, interesting. <laughs> well, my next book is called Bindle Punk Bruja. This comes out September 13th. This is by... Desideria Mesa. So the publisher says, oh, and this is published by Harper Voyager also, which was the previous one. I am who I am. Luna, or depending on who's asking, Rose is the white passing daughter of an immigrant mother who has seen what happens to people from her culture. This world is prejudicial, and she must hide her identity in pursuit of owning an illegal jazz club. Using her cunning powers, Rose negotiates with dangerous criminals as she climbs up Kansas City's bootlegging ladder. Luna, however, runs the risk of losing everything if the crooked city councilmen and ruthless mobsters discover her ties to an immigrant boxcar community that secretly houses witches. Last thing she wants is to put her entire family in danger. But this bruja with ever-growing magical abilities can never resist a good fight. With her new identity, Rose, an unabashed flapper, defies societal expectations all the, all the while struggling to keep her true self and witchcraft in check. However, the harder she tries to avoid scrutiny, the more efforts ev eventually capture unwanted attention. Soon she finds herself surrounded by greed and every brand of bigotry. From local gangsters who want a piece of the action and businessmen who hate her diverse staff to the KKK and Al Capone. Will oh, her wow. Earth... <laughs> Sorry. It's... No, I... That's a lot. It is a lot. I'm, I'm trying to see how they were able to fit this all in this entire book. Will her Earth magic be enough to save her friends and family? As much as she hates to admit it, she may need to learn to have faith in others, and learning to trust may prove to be her biggest ambition yet. Oh, there's a lot in this book. So yeah. it's Boardwalk Empire meets The Vanishing Half. <laughs> it's a historical fantasy and dark. So check it out. This is Bindle Punk Bruja by Desideria Mesa. My next book is The Butcher and the Wren by Elena Urquhart. It comes out September 13th. The publisher is Zando. It's from the co-host of the chart-topping true crime podcast, Morbid. It's a debut novel told from the dueling perspectives of a notorious serial killer and the medical examiner following where his trail of victims leads. Ooh. So, something dark is lurking in the Louisiana Bayou. A methodical killer with a penchant for medical experimentation. Ugh. He is hard at work completing his most harrowing crime yet and taunting the authorities who desperately try to catch up. So basically the plot of every serial killer book ever. Mm -hmm. But forensic pathologist Dr. Ren Muller is the best there is. She's armed with an encyclopedic knowledge of historical crimes and years of experience working in the medical examiner's office. So she's never encountered a case she couldn't solve. Until now. Case after case is piling up on Ren's examination table, and soon she's sucked into an all-consuming cat-and-mouse chase with a brutal murderer who's getting more brazen by the day. I will totally read this. Content warning. 
that are straight from the morgue details that only an autopsy technician could provide. What? So that's The Butcher and the Wren, a novel by Elena or Alana Urquhart. I like that title, too. That's cool. Mm -hmm. My next book is called The City Beneath the Hidden Stars. Speaking of great mm. titles, mm -hmm. this comes out September 27th. This is by Sonia Coudé, and this is actually an indie book. I think we included it because the cover is really beautiful with a lot of dark elements. It's like a dark fantasy. So, long ago, the Black Queen once ruled Zagreb in a looming fortress over the city. Her legend lives on in children's games and bedtime stories. Is it truly only folktale? And what harm is death to a queen who supposedly stole secrets from the stars? When rumors surfaced that the Black Queen might still be alive and living in a haunted chasm beneath Zagreb's bare mountain, it prompts the Star Council, Council to dispatch star daemon Leo Solar to Earth to investigate. After witnessing a bizarre event at a local music gig, gig, former philosophy student Dario Tubik begins to notice a strange-looking man in a star suit. Curious, he follows him, and what he discovers catapults him into a world he never knew existed. A world of magical trams, myths and monsters, celestial beings, and the legendary Black Queen. So this is The City Beneath the Hidden Stars by Sonia Coudé. And I kind of like stories where you have a character who's living in modern times and then is basically transported to a totally different world and they're totally lost. I, I kind of like stories like that personally. I'm not a fan, however, of debut authors who name their characters so obviously, like, he's a demon from the stars, so his last name is Solar. Yes, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> that's why I was laughing. I was like, oh, that's... no. Cheesy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess his last name couldn't be Smith or Johnson, though, sure. to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> My next book is The Classified Dossier, Sherlock Holmes and Mr. Hyde. It is part of a series. It's book two. The author is Christian Claver, or Claver. It's set in 1903. A darkness has descended on London. Poor London. That always happens to London. Yeah. <laughs> darkness, mist, fog, killers. I guess we can't help it. <laughs> a, serious, or excuse me, a series of grisly murders are uncovered. Trophies have been taken. The bodies arranged. And soon there are whispers of Jack the Ripper's return. Well, a new client arrives at Baker Street seeking Sherlock Holmes's help. Dr. Jekyll claims that his friend has been wrongfully accused of the hideous crimes. A friend called, you know it, Mr. Oh. Edward Hyde, God. <laughs> whose very existence relies on a potion administered by the doctor himself. But the case becomes more complicated and more unsettling than simply proving Mr. Hyde's innocence. For Holmes and Watson unearth beastly transformations, a killer who moves unseen, and a secret organization, and then they find a traitor in their midst. There's a lot going on. Wow. In the classified dossier, Sherlock Holmes and Mr. Hyde, it comes out October 4, a perfect spooky season read, and the publisher is Titan Books. Wow. This one's going to be a really cool one, too, actually. Uh, it's called Damnable Tales, a folk horror anthology. This comes out September 13th. This is The editor is Richard Wells, but we have stories and illustrations. So he also does the illustrations, but there are Ooh. Shirley Jackson stories in here. We have Fiona McLeod, M.R. James, oh. Robert Eichmann. So there are 22 stories that take the reader into the isolated and untamed wilderness of unholy rites, witches' curses, sinister village traditions, and ancient horrors. I love that there are illustrations. They stalk the moors at night, the deep forests, the cornered fields, and dusky churchyards, the narrow lanes and old ways of these ancient places, drawing upon the haunted landscapes of folk horror. 
This richly illustrated anthology gathers together classic short stories from the masters of supernatural fiction. I already listed a whole bunch of the authors, but we also have Arthur Machen, uh, Sheridan Lefanu, Robert Louis Stevenson. There's a lot of people here, and I'm really quite excited. I do like anthologies a lot. And I'm excited to see some folk horror anthology coming out, especially before Halloween. Oh my goodness. So this is Damnable Tales, a folk horror anthology edited by Richard Wells and published by Unbound. My next book is by Josh Mallerman, who you might remember from Bird Box. Yeah. It's called Daphne, a novel. It comes out September 20th from Del Rey Books. So horror has a new name, Daphne. A brutal, enigmatic woman stalks a high school basketball team oh. in a reimagining of the slasher genre. Hmm. It's a, described as a superb serial killer novel and a great coming-of-age story. So it's the last summer for Kit Lamb, the last summer before college, the last summer with her high school basketball team, and with Dana, her best friend the last summer before her life begins. But the night before the big game, one of the players tells a ghost story about Daphne, a girl who went to their school many years ago and died under mysterious circumstances. Some say she was murdered, others that she died by her own hand. And some say that Daphne is a murderer herself. They also say that Daphne is still out there, obsessed with her with revenge, and she'll appear to kill again anytime someone thinks about her. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so after Kit hears the story, her teammates start vanishing one by one. They must have been thinking about Daphne. And Kit begins to suspect that the stories about Daphne are real, and to fear that her own mind is conjuring the killer. Now it's a race against time as Kit searches for the truth behind the legend and learns to face her own fears before the summer of her lifetime becomes the last summer of her life. Oh God. So I probably would not be interested in reading this because it sounds really silly and childish, but it's Josh Mallerman, and I love his books. So I'm going to consider it a summer read because it comes out in September 20 when it'll still unfortunately be hot at my home. Yeah. And I'll just pretend I'm on the beach dressed up in 90,000 proof SPF and reading a book. <laughs> That's Daphne, a novel by Josh Mallerman. I don't know. I might give this one a shot because it is by Josh Mallerman. I like basketball, so I don't know. And serial mm. killers and ki whatever. Maybe I I'll try it. I didn't know you liked basketball. Playing yeah, or watching? Both. Mm. I like both. I used to I've, play as a kid. I've learned something about you today, my creepy co-host. I know. <laughs> it's not creepy either. <laughs> okay. I'll share. I like playing badminton, but I'm very badminton at it. <laughs> I didn't know that either. We actually like some form of sports ball. That's kind of hilarious. Uh, anyway, so my next book is also is by Tor. Uh, it is called The Dead Take the A Train. This is going to be a series of books called Carrion City. It comes out September 27th. This is by Richard Kadri and Cassandra Ka. Julie Cruz is a coked up, burnt out 30 something who packs a lot of magic into her small body. Hmm. She's trying to establish herself as a major psychic operative in the New York City magic scene, and she'll work the most gruesome gigs to claw her way to the top. Desperate to break the dead end grind, Julie summons a guardian angel for a quick career boost. But when her power grab accidentally releases an elder god hell-bent on the annihilation of our galaxy, the Oops. blood count rises rapidly. <laughs> kind of screwed this. up there, little girl. <laughs> I know. I hope it's Cthulhu. It's like, I've got to take over the world. All right. So this book is a high-octane cocktail of cos cosmic horror and Kadri's gritty fantasy, shaken, not stirred. <laughs> I I love it. So this is called The Dead Take the A Train. Uh, this comes out September 27th. It's by Richard Kadri and Cassandra Ka. My next book is by Stephen King. Mm. 
I don't have to introduce him to you guys. No. <laughs> His new mega huge hardback comes out September 6th. It is called Fairy Tale. Cool. Charlie Reed looks like a regular high school kid. He's great at baseball and football, but not at Katie's favorite basketball. Oh. He's a decent student, but he carries a heavy load. His mom was killed in a hit-and-run accident when he was 10, and grief drove his dad to drink. And there's many Stephen King male characters who have a drinking problem. <laughs> so this is another one of them. Yeah. It's a theme. No problem. And Charlie learned how to take care of himself and his dad. When Charlie's 17, he meets a dog named Radar and her aging master, Howard Bowditch, a recluse in a big house at the top of a big hill with a locked shed in the backyard. Hmm. And sometimes strange sounds emerge from the shed. <laughs> it's not E.T. Oh, good. So Charlie starts doing jobs for Mr. Bowditch and loses his heart to Radar, the doggy. Then when Bowditch dies, he leaves Charlie a cassette tape telling a story no one would believe. Luckily, there's no crossover with the ring, even though it's a cassette, not a videotape. So what Bowditch knows and has kept secret all of his long life is that inside the shed is a portal to another world. I'm there. Uh. I'm there. So Stephen King writes that early in the pandemic, he asked himself, what could you write that would make you happy? And this is the book. So I am this is, curious about yeah. that. Wow. I mean, who doesn't like a portal to another world in the shed in your backyard? And I'm right. very disappointed that my shed is just a shed. Ah. Maybe we'll prove it wrong this week. I'm so excited. <laughs> so that's Fairy Tale by Stephen King. Comes out September 6th from Scribner. My final book for today is also from, some might say, Master of Horror. This is a Ramsey Campbell book. Ooh. It is called Fellstones. Comes out September 13th. I only have read one of Ramsey Campbell's short stories recently. It wasn't my jam, but I am willing to give this one a shot. Fellstones takes its name from seven objects on the village green. It's where Paul Dunstan was adopted by the Stavelys after his parents died in an accident for which he blames himself. The way the Stavelys tried to control him made him move away and change his name. Why were they obsessed with a strange song he seemed to have made up as a child? Now, their daughter, Adele, has found him. By the time he discovers the cosmic truth about the stones, he may be trapped. There are other dark secrets he'll discover and memories to confront. The Fellstones dream, but they're about to waken. So this is published by Flame Tree Press. Uh, check out Fellstones. This is by Ramsey Campbell. Thank you, everyone, for coming along with us on this journey to the dark side of the library for September 2022 Dark Fiction. We'll have another podcast with more of our finds coming out soon. We publish on Wednesdays and on Fridays. Katie occasionally surprises us with minisodes, and we may occasionally publish some episodes on Morbid Mondays since there are so many dark books coming out this autumn. Be sure to stop by our Instagram at Dark Side of the Library or our Facebook. Share our posts with your friends, add them to your stories. And if you would like, you could help other people find our dark podcast by leaving us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts if that's where you listen to us. Thanks so much, and we'll chat with you in the next episode.